If you're ready now, the starting lineups tonight for the Cardinals, leading off and playing left field will be Lou Brock. Hitting second at shortstop, Gary Templeton. Tony Scott will be in center field and bat third. Hitting fourth in right field, Hector Cruz. Batting number five and catching, Ted Simmons. Keith Hernandez will bat sixth and play first base. Kenny Reese will bat seventh, he's the third baseman. Hitting eighth at second, Mike Tyson. And batting ninth and pitching, right-hander John Denny. Again for the Cardinals, it's Brock in left, Templeton at shortstop, Scott in center field. Cruz in right, Simmons catching, Hernandez at first. With Reitz at third, Tyson at second, and Denny on the mound. For the Reds, Pete Rose will lead it off and play third base. Hitting second in right field, Ken Griffey. Joe Morgan, batting third, will play second. In the cleanup slot, the first baseman, Dan Dreesen. George Foster will bat fifth and play left field. Hitting sixth, the catcher, Johnny Bench. Doug Flynn will be in shortstop tonight and bat seventh. Hitting eighth in center field, Cesar Geronimo. And batting ninth and pitching, left-hander, Freddie Norman. Once more for the Reds, it's Rose at third, Griffey in right field, Morgan at second base. Dreesen at first, Foster in left field, bench catching. With Flynn at shortstop, Geronimo in center, and Norman on the mound. Joe, the St. Louis Cardinals, probably the speediest ball club right now in the National League, a club that likes to take advantage when running uh, comes to the forefront and a team that right now rests atop the National League East. You say running, but by golly, you look at your statistics and it's a little bit surprising. They're 11 uh, for 24 in stolen bases, so <laughs> we've stolen 21 bases, so you... I guess you wonder about it, but I'm sure they'll run without a doubt. But uh, I guess the overall success of the Cardinals has been uh, uh, runs that they have scored. They're way out in front of last year. Uh, after 20 games last year, they had scored a total of 74 runs. And after 20 games this year, they've scored 107. So you'd have to think and have to say their offense has picked up an awful lot here early in the season as compared to last year. Well, we got our first look at him tonight and leading things off as usual for the Cardinals, veteran outfielder Lou Brock. As Freddie Norman works to the plate and Brock takes it off the plate for a ball and this game is underway. Brock batting 297, he's knocked in four runs, but of course this man drawing a great deal of attention this season as he bears down on Ty Cobb's career stolen base record. Brock bounces a second pitch to Dreesen. Danny flips to Norman covering, and that's the first down of the game. For your information, Brock is only 25 bases away from breaking Ty Cobb's career base stealing record. Brock coming into this game tonight has swiped a total of three bases and five tries this season, so Lou Brock is, I'm sure, going to be the focal point of Newspaper articles, magazine articles, television, radio interviews from now through the rest of the season as he bears down on it and once he breaks it. Here's shortstop Templeton off the end of the bat, a ground ball shortstop. Flynn dialing Dreesen, two out. So two quickly down for the Cardinals in the first inning as Brock bounces out, Dreesen to Norman. Templeton grounds out, Doug Flynn to Danny Dreesen. Two out batter will be center fielder Tony Scott as we check the Reds defensively at first recent at second Morgan at shortstop Flynn at third base Rose. In left field George Foster and center Cesar Geronimo and in right field Kenny Griffey. Johnny Bench behind the plate and here is Scott 387 batting average and he's knocked in six runs. The pitch is high and outside ball one. Scott on a super spring and has carried it right on into regular season play. He's a switch hitter batting right-handed against Norman and hitting 471 from that side. Pitches inside, ball two. Two out, bases empty, two and nothing to count. Norman against Scott with Hector Cruz waiting on deck. Freddie Wines delivers, Scott swings, fly ball hit back to left. Foster on the warning track, and he will be there to make the catch as the side is retired. The Cardinals are out quickly and out one, two, three. After a half inning of baseball, St. Louis nothing and Cincinnati coming to bat. You know, different folks have different ways to spend their time, enjoy their days. Me, I like to fish. I really do. There's something good about a lazy creek. 
Helps me relax from a long, hard week, like my Red Fox Chew and Tobacco, the relax and chew. It's soft and moist and mild for sure. The flavor is fresh. The taste is pure. Red Fox is best. I like it. Yes, I do. So I keep me an extra pouch of Red Fox by my side of my tackle box. When it comes to tobacco, those Red Fox folks come through. Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with the picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox chewing tobacco. Now it's better than ever. So if you like to relax, and I'll bet you do, treat yourself to a Red Fox chew. Because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. Well, we're in quickly to the bottom of the first inning, and the Reds will be looking tonight at a man who's gotten a better start than any other pitcher in the National League, starting pitchers, that is. John Denny, who has started five times, he's not had a complete game, but he's had a decision every time out, and every decision has been on the left side. He's 5-0 and with a 2.91 earned run average, and Joe, this guy and the guy who we're going to be seeing Wednesday night, Bob Force, between them, have won nine of the Cardinal 12 games while losing only one. Marty, they're both fine young pitchers. No question at all about that. And John Denny, uh, you uh, have to imagine that he's come up with a good change, would be my guess, uh, in looking at him. But he has an excellent curveball, a good fastball, and uh, although the 13 uh, strikeouts and 14 walks really aren't impressive, but yet in 33 innings, and John is not a, an out and out strikeout pitcher, so. A young man that knows how to pitch and we found out early how to pitch and we're going to have to really go after it. Pete Rose standing in with his 16 game hitting streak on the line. He had a couple of singles yesterday and the 4-1 loss to the Cubs here. Then he delivers and it gets the outside black for strike one. Pete batting 333 has homered one time and has 10 runs batted in. Denny a quick worker like Norman to pitch swung on line to left field base hit. Right inside, fair territory as Rose heads on towards second with a stand-up double. His eighth two-base hit of the year. As he goes the other way with a line drive double left. So Rose wraps Denny's second pitch for a double out of the wrong barrel. It steps to the plate now, right fielder Ken Griffey. And the pitch to Griff is low, ball one. Rose extending his hitting streak to 17 here in the first inning. While this man is looking to extend his hitting string to seven consecutive games. Griffey batting 350, trying to get Rose home. The pitch swung on, ground ball to first base. Hernandez will look to third. Now flip on to Denny covering to get the out in a close play on Griffey. Keith Hernandez had ideas about going across a diamond to Kenny Reitz, but then thought better of it. Had to change his line of thinking quickly, and Denny coming off that mound quickly to bring about an outplay on Griffey at first. Well, Marty, I, I have a feeling that this young man who's stepping in now is going to get underway tonight. Uh, just have that feeling. Well, we hope so. Joe Morgan has been finding the hits few and far between. He's hitting 258, which is unlike him. Rose at third and out. Morgan swings. Bouncing ball foul at first base. Cardinal infield shows Hernandez first, Tyson second, Templeton short, Reitz third. Brock, Scott, Cruz, left center and right, Simmons catching. The Reds trying to get a run home in the first inning. Rose at third, one out, the strike one delivery to Morgan is taken low and outside, one ball and one strike. And Joe swung a hot bat last year against Cardinal pitching, 452 average with 10 RBIs and two home runs. Change is high and outside. Ball two. Two and one. Danny Dreesen on deck. Sparky Anderson changing his lineup after the Cubs won yesterday's game, moving Morgan back to third, Griffey back to second. Here's a bouncer foul off third. And installing Dan Dreesen into the cleanup spot. But the lineup that he had played was very kind to him. Seven games he used it with Rose, Concepcion, Griffey, Morgan, Dreesen, Winning five and losing only two. Two and two the count. Denny glances to Rose at third, sends a pitch in. Morgan takes strike three. Two out as Morgan is caught looking. And that'll bring up Danny Dreesen. 
Friesen in tonight with a 261 batting average. He, Foster, and Morgan have all hit three home runs to tie for club leadership in his 16 RBI, second behind Foster's 20. Ball to him. Lee Wire calling balls and strikes. Art Williams at first, Paul Rungi at second, and Ed Montague at third. Well, Denny getting a big strike out of Morgan, and now working to Dreesen and in with a call strike to count even at one and one. Danny in the last seven games has been flat tattooing the baseball, a 440 batting average. 13 RBIs, couple of homers, seven runs scored. Check swing on the change, ball two. Two and one. We're in the home first inning, no score. Rose open with a double move to third on Griffey's bouncing ball to the right side, and Morgan was called out on strikes. Dreesen grounds it along the first baseline, but a foul ball. Picked up by Coach Russ Nixon. So John Denny, even with Danny Dreesen, two and two. Cardinal right-hander with a winning record career-wise against Cincinnati. Two wins, a loss. One and one against us last year, winning 9-5 on the 23rd of August and losing 7-1 seven, seven days later. Well, that changeup got away from Denny and bounces up there. Looks like he slipped on the pitching rubber as he released a baseball. It looked like Denny might have caught his back foot as he pushed off. Uh, well, could have very easily thrown a wild pitch. And he could have. Good changeup. Let's see get to the plate. Three balls, two strikes, and the payoff pitch on the way to Dreesen. Swung on and foul. Despite losing yesterday, the Reds remain seven and a half games back of the Dodgers and in second place in the Western Division. Somebody, in this case Montreal, finally beating Los Angeles. Big day for Gary Carter, two homers, and Dell Unser. Foul ball. Well, tonight the Dodgers remaining home to meet the New York Mets in the first of four. That series opener will find Jerry Kuzman going against Doug Rao, so a couple of talented left-handers will be hooking up at Dodger Stadium later on tonight. 3-2 pitch again. That is strike three call. Denny coming up with two big back-to-back -back strikeouts against Morgan and Dreesen. And the Reds in the first inning have no runs on a hit, no errors, and Rose left at third. At the end of one, Reds nothing, Cardinals nothing. Wouldn't it be great to get a small group of friends or business associates, up to six people, and fly to the next Cincinnati Reds game? Or fly to one of the golf tournaments? Or maybe the Indy 500? Or create your own outing, like a Canadian hunting or fishing trip. Well, you can, with Trans Am Charter Service. Just call Scott Craig at 274-2002 to set up time and destination. You'll be pleased with Trans Am's charter rates. You know your business should consider charter over commercial flying. Scott Craig will be happy to present a cost analysis at your office. Trans Am will pick up passengers at any of the five airports in Columbus and Delaware at no additional charge. And you may use your Bank America card or Master Charge. Trans Am offers 24-hour air service for business, pleasure, or freight. Make plans today. Call 274-2002. Trans Am Air Transporting Service. We move to the top of the second inning. No score at the end of one. And the Cardinals will be sending Plateward, Hector Cruz, Ted Simmons, Keith Hernandez, the middle third of their batting order. Freddie Norman retiring Brock and Templeton on ground outs and getting Scott on a fly ball that Foster flagged down on the warning track in left field. Cruz last year, of course, the third baseman for the Cardinals. But as St. Louis reacquires the services of Kenny Reitz after a one-year exile to San Francisco, it frees Cruz to go back to a natural outfield position. He's batting 316. Right-handed batter, Norman delivers, and the pitch is high ball one. Cruz with a home run and knocked in 12 runs up to this point as the Cardinals have won 12 out of their first 19 games. The pitch fouled off. Count drawing level at one ball and one strike to Hector Cruz. Bet the Cardinals will be watching the board tonight to see what transpires in the game involving the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Atlanta Braves. 
That is a club, Pittsburgh, that is the closest to the division-leading Cardinals in the National League East. St. Louis 13-7, and seven, a game up on the Pirates who have won 11 and lost 7. One ball and one strike on Cruz, a pitch swung out and missed. Cruz walking away from the plate now, behind on the ball, two strikes. After those two teams, Montreal next in line, two and a half games back with a record of nine and eight. The Mets playing 500 baseball through 18 games or three back. And then the Cubs and the Phillies each have won eight and lost nine. They are three and a half games off the pace being set by St. Louis. Here's a smash off Norman. Freddie runs to pick it up and throws him out. Well, it looked like it got Freddie in the leg, but does not appear to be any the worse for wear as he picked the ball up just to the back side of the mound near first base and threw on to Dreesen to get Cruz for the first down. One out batter will be catcher Ted Simmons. Boy, what a start he's off to. His 423 batting average leads the National League. He's homered five times and has driven in 23 runs. Having some kind of season, this man. Another one of the switch hitters in the Cardinal lineup. Norman with a pitch and Simmons with a take of ball. Tonight they've got Simmons, Templeton, and Scott. All switch hitters, and they have one more on the bench, and that, of course, would be Don Kessinger. Make it two more, Jerry Mumphrey. Two balls, no strikes. No score, top of the second, one out, as Cruz has been retired on a ground ball back to the mound. Now the 2-0 delivery. Simmons swings and pulls it foul at third base. As a right-handed batter, Ted is hitting 375. As a left-hander, has been up 31 times, has had 15 hits. That figures out to a 484 batting average. Count to Simmons, two balls, one strike. Norman to the rising back behind the mound. On deck is first baseman Keith Hernandez. Here's a look, and here's a pitch. He got around on it, two and two. Simmons last year batted 291, which was a creditable season for him in view of the fact that his lifetime batting average is 297. But an off year, after hitting 332 in 1975 with 100 runs batted in, he grounds to short. Easy play for Flynn. On to first, two out. That'll bring up Hernandez, rapidly stamping himself as one of the fine young hitters in the National League. Batting 323, and here's a man that simply decimated our pitching last year, batting 450. Had one homer and three RBIs against Cincinnati pitching. On the year, a 289 hitter in 76. Left handed batter. And Norman gets ahead of him quickly with a fastball for a taken strike one. Freddy has retired the first five Cardinal batters. Four of the five going out on infield ground balls. The 0-1 high fly ball, center field, driving Geronimo back. He pulls up, and he'll make the catch. Three men up, three men down. After an inning and a half, Cincinnati nothing and St. Louis nothing. <laughs> How do you explain the fact that of the ten largest breweries in America today, Stroh's is the only one that is still family-owned and family-run? We believe it goes back to a way of thinking that has been passed down from one generation of Stroh's to the next for more than 200 years. To the Stroh family, brewing is more than just a way of making money. It's something they were brought up to become personally involved with and to take personal pride in. Because beer is a living thing that has to be looked after by someone who really cares about it. That's the way the stores run their brewery today. We think the real beer lover will appreciate it. The 
Ford Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Family brewers for more than 200 years. The Cincinnati Reds Marching Band Festival is coming up Sunday, May 15th. When the Reds meet the Mets at 2.15. But be sure to get to Riverfront early for all the color and pageantry of the annual Marching Band Festival. Five of the top high school bands in Reds country compete for honors. Here are the bands selected to compete this year. Fairfield High School, Northmont High near Dayton, Grove City High near Columbus, Bluffton High School from Bluffton, Indiana, and Richmond High in Richmond, Indiana. Be on hand for all the fun of the Reds Marching Band Festival again. It'll be on Sunday, May 15th, right here at Riverfront. We head to round two. As far as the Reds are concerned, Foster will start it off. Reds had a golden opportunity to get out in front early in the first inning when Rose doubled and with one out was standing at third base. But then John Denny with call strikeouts to Joe Morgan and Dan Dreesen to get out of the inning unscathed. Foster is second on the club in average or third, rather, at 324, leads the team and runs batted in with 20 and has three home runs. 29 homers last year, of course, and two of them came against the Cardinals along with nine runs batted in. Denny pitches. Foster takes. Ball one is high. We'll be off tomorrow and then close out the series in the homestand on Wednesday night as Bob Forsch goes for St. Louis. He's won four or five decisions, and his mound opposition will be provided from by left-hander Woody Fryman. Foster takes it up and in. Denny behind, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Cardinal outfield giving Foster a bunch of real estate in right center. And they play him deep. Brock, Scott, and Cruz. George climbing back in the batter's box with a count of two balls and no strikes. Denny waiting along with his battery mate Ted Simmons. Here's a pitch. Strike is called. Two and one. And two of the better hitting teams in the National League going against each other. The Reds hitting at 271, and the Cardinals one point less as a team. Johnny Bench on deck. Foster takes the off speed pitch inside, and he's a pitch away from getting a walk. Denny, three balls and one strike on him. Denny, of course, was last year's earned run average king in the National League. Five wins and no losses this season. That's something else. Here's a ground ball to the glove side of Templeton. He almost booted it, recovered, and throws Foster out at first. Johnny Bench will step in. Well, Dan Hunter, the Reds group sales director, tells us he and Sparky Anderson, as well as a large contingent of Reds players and coaches, at a super visit today to General Electric's Evendale plant. They toured the facility and had a chance to meet and visit with a lot of the GE folks who will be here at Riverfront for the two GE nights coming up June 3rd and 4th when the Reds meet the Astros. The GE group annually totals more than 20,000 for the two games. Ball one to bench. Well, they had a nice visit out there, and I'll tell you, some super people. Here's a shot pulled foul to left field as bench jumps on a hanging breaking ball from Denny. One ball, one strike. John hitting at 258. Three home runs, nine runs batted in. Strike two swinging as the right hander runs the pitch up and in on him. Reds nothing, Cardinals nothing. We're hitting off John Denny and the Cardinals in the home second. Bench takes the pitch high. Two balls, two strikes to Johnny Bench. Denny back on the pitching rubber as he checks in with Simmons and two twos to the plate. Grounded off the end of the bat. Here's Tyson up with the ball, flipping on to first. Two out. Bench bouncing out second to first, so the two-out hitter with nothing going on will be center fielder Cesar Geronimo. They're apparently making a change in their batting order because the original order had Flynn hitting seventh and Geronimo hitting eighth. They go the other way around here. Geronimo down and in, ball one. He's hitting 208. A couple of home runs. 
Reed's playing him well off the third baseline and about even with a bag. That's in for a strike. One ball, one strike. Joe Morgan watching John Denny very closely from the Cincinnati dugout. Here's a ground that is short. Templeton throwing. Hernandez catching and the side retired. The Reds are out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We move to the third. It's Cincinnati nothing and St. Louis nothing. From the pipeline in Wyoming To the oil wells down in Texas Off the shore in Louisiana To right back home in Finley Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning it into something people can use is another. We got people together we thought could do it better. And we called the company Marathon. From the waters of Alaska To the research labs in Denver From the Robinson refinery To pumping gas in Indiana We got together to do it better We Marathon Marathon Oil Company We got together to do it better. We'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. The best in baseball from WMNI-FM, Columbus, Ohio. And always the very best in music on 50,000 Watt Quad 100. The music leader in Central Ohio. Freddie Norman all set to go to work to Cardinal batters here in the third inning. And to call the action for you, here's Joe Nuxall. All right, Marty, it'll be the bottom three in the order. Ken Reach, the Cardinal third baseman, then Mike Tyson, and pitcher John Denny. Reach hitting 213, a home run, nine RBIs. He's had eight doubles. Freddie Norman ready to go to work, and his first pitch on the way. Reach takes it high a ball. Cardinals 13 and 7 on the year. They lead the Eastern Division of the National League. 1 0 delivery. Swung on and missed. 1 and 1. Have a game lead over the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates have won 11 and lost 7. 13 and 7 for the Cardinals. 1 1 delivery. High and outside. Two balls to strike. Well, the Indianapolis Indians playing. Wichita tonight, and it's going to be Mike Lacoste on the mound for the Indians. Norman, the 2 1. Swung on and fouled. Back and out of play, and the count even to two balls, two strikes to Ken Reitz. St. Louis has a team batting average of 2 7. Pointed out has scored 107 runs already this year. The Reds have scored 100 runs. They have a team average of 271. Norman 2-2 two two with Reitz. He delivers. And that ball is slider inside and apparently hit Ken on the right elbow. And he'll move on to first base. A 2-2 two two pitch hits Ken Reitz, he's at first base, the first base runner for the Cardinals. That'll bring second baseman Mike Tyson to the plate. Tyson, a 156 batting average, one RBI, and one double. Eastern Division, the Cardinals, as we pointed out, leading Pirates second in Montreal. Nine and eight record, they're two and a half back. Then there comes the Mets, the Cubs, and the Phillies in last place. Actually tied with the Cubs for last place in the Eastern Division. Norman ready to work to Tyson. It swung on and bounced to Flynn. He'll go to Morgan. Easy double play. Dreeson, and that is number 21 for the Reds this year. Play going 6-4-3. On the double play. Two away now, and... John Denny, the pitcher, steps in. 
Then he 067, his batting average. He's had one hit in 15 times of the play to right handed batter. Norman delivers, then he swings and pulls and foul down the left side. Is the 18th double play the Reds have turned in, not the 20th. On one to count. Harmon's pitch on the way, and then he takes it on the outside corner, called strike. A lot of straight A fans with us tonight, straight A students, around 10,000. Norman's 0-2. That's a breaking pitch. It's low and inside. A ball, two strikes to John Denny. The American League, Minnesota leading the West with a 14-9 record. Milwaukee leading the East with a 12-7 record. Pitch on the way. Strike three call as Norman gets the outside corner with a fastball. So the Finals out here in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. And at the middle of the third, cards nothing, the Reds nothing. What makes a Norge washer so irresistible to the ladies? There's an easy answer. Norge's giant 20-pound capacity. Your Norge washer washes one or two loads of clothes that other brands have to do in four or five loads. You save time, energy, and money with a Norge automatic washer. The 10-cycle Norge washers like the LWA 2550B give you mini-load water level control to set fast and accurately just the right water level for loads from 2 pounds to 20 pounds. Your Norge washer is rugged, just like the Norge machines in the commercial laundries. Matching Norge dryers in white, copper tone, avocado, and harvest gold are also built to handle the full 20-pound loads right out of your big Norge washer. Nord saves you time, water detergent, and money. For complete details, stop by J&J Sales, 702 West Hunter Street, Logan, Ohio. A Norge means four-way savings. Now the Reds will send up Doug Flynn, Freddie Norman, and Pete Rose against John Denny as they bat in the third inning. The Reds have had one base hit off Denny, and that was Rose leadoff double. In the first inning, his eighth of the year, he moved on to third as Griffey bounced to Hernandez at first, but was stranded there as both Morgan and Dreesen took called third strikes. And he 5 and 0 on the year, making his sixth start. Doug Flynn, a 200 batting average. Doug's first start of the year. Dave Concepcion out of the lineup tonight. Bob Peel around to the right for Doug. As Denny delivers, Flynn takes a call strike. And reads well off the line at third and even with the bag. Then he delivers the 0-1. High and inside with a fastball. Count evens 1-1. One one. Pitch on the way. That's high. 2-1 and one now to Doug Flynn. Reds average 30,743 for the month of April. First time in the club's history. That is happening. A low liner by Flynn to Templeton who picks it off about knee high. And one out. That'll bring Freddie Norman to the plate. Freddie hitting nothing. He's old for eight. John Denny, of course, last year led the National League in ERA. The 252 mark, his first pitch to Norman high and outside a ball. 
Then he was 11 and 9 last year. He started 30 games and completed eight of them. 207 innings he worked. Norman swings and the chopper off the right of the mound. Then he has it. He throws on to Hernandez and quickly two away for the Reds here in the third. And I bring Pete Rose to the plate, and as we mentioned Pete with a double in the first inning, leading off the game for the Reds down the left field line. Pete now with a 17-game hitting streak. This Pete's longest streak in his major league career was in 1967. He had 25 straight games, hit in 25 straight, takes a strike from Denny. In his longest streak since 1974, when he also hit safely in 16 straight. Of course, that's now 17. Then he's inside with a fastball as Lee Wire takes a good look at the pitch. Rose looking down at Ted Simmons, apparently Ted wanting it. So the count evens at one and one. Then he works on the outside corner, called strike. The count goes one and two now to Pete. Two outs and the base is empty. No score. Third inning. Ken Griffey is standing on deck. Outfield is straight away. Denny delivers. Rose takes it outside. Off-speed pitch. Two and two. Red's five-game winning streak coming to a halt in yesterday afternoon's game with the Cubs. Two-two on the way. Swung on. That's the base hit in the hole in the right left field. Pete reaching out and punching it right in the hole between Templeton and Reeves, hitting it right on the nose. And Pete with his second base hit of the ball game. Two away, Ken Griffey steps in. Kenny bounced to Hernandez in the first inning. Griffey with a six-game hitting streak, a 350 batting average, two home runs and nine RBI. Denny the stretch and the pitch. Griffey takes it inside. It bounces in front of the plate. Nice stop by Teddy Simmons. Uh, Lee Wire, the plate umpire, asked to inspect the baseball. Wire at the plate. Art Williams at first base and Paul Rungi at third or at second rather. Ed Montague around the third base. The umpires tonight. One ball, no strikes to Ken Griffey. Two out and rows at first base. Denny has his sign. Sets and delivered. Griff swings and chops it foul off his right foot. Not evens one and one. Benny, born in Prescott, Arizona, stands 6'3, weighs 190 pounds. John, this is his second full year. In the major leagues, he's been part of 74 and part of 75 for the Cardinals. 1-1 one, one on the way, Owen oh, inside, two balls a strike. Then he won 10 and lost 7 in 75 after being called up from Tulsa. A 397 earned run average. He was there almost all year. He started 24 ball games, completed 3 in 75. 2-1 on the way. High three balls, one strike now to Ken Griffey. Rose leads at first. Then he to the belt. Checking Pete. Goes over there and Rose steps back. Last year, the Reds and the Cards split the season's 12 games. Griff swings on a pitch, bounces it to Tyson. He has it to Hernandez, and that's it. So in the inning for the Reds, no runs, they get a hit. They're second, there were no, no errors, and one runner left on base. And at the end of three, it remains the Cardinals nothing, the Reds nothing.
Company, Detroit, Michigan. Three inning totals, the Cardinals nothing across. The Reds have had a couple of hits. Freddie Norman on the mound for the Reds, and it'll be the top of the order for St. Louis in the fourth. Lou Brock to lead it off. Back for the action, Marty Renneman. Okay, Joe, Freddie has gone through the Cardinal order one complete time in three innings, has not allowed a base hit or anything remotely resembling one. He got Brock to lead off the game and bounce out first baseman to the pitcher. So Lewis comes back now as we go to the fourth inning in a game that is taking on much the same early pattern as the one we had here yesterday involving Pat Zachary and Rick Rushell. In that game, it was five innings of scoreless baseball. The Reds had been held to three hits. The Cubs had gotten only two off Zachary before Chicago put a couple of runs on the board in the sixth inning and went on to win it by three. Here's a pitch to Brock, swung on, grounded by the mound. Morgan waiting on it. He has it quick, throw to first, and he gets it. One out. So the beat goes on for Freddie Norman as he now prepares to deal with shortstop Gary Templeton for the second time. Templeton is grounded out short to first. Youngster who drew drew supreme rave notices last year after the Cardinals called him up. Ball one to him. Great quickness and speed of field. Sure hands, and boy, they're predicting big things for this young man in the future. He swings and he fouls it back. He's a switch hitter and is a right-handed batter, hits at 275, and as a left-handed batter, goes at 314. Got a hitting streak going. Templeton is hit in seven straight. Batting 367 with nine runs scored. He's had an RBI also in each of his last four games, so he's been swinging a warm bat for him. One ball, one strike, one out. No score in the top of the fourth inning. Norman delivers, and Templeton swings at a high fastball. Strike two. Tony Scott will be up next. And that's strike three, swinging. <laughs> Gary Templeton strikes out against Freddie Norman, and for Fred, make it two punch outs in the game. And here's Scott. He's hit the best bolt off Norman, sending Foster to the warning track and straightaway left in the first inning. Here's a high fly ball back of first base. Dreesen, Morgan, Griffey converging, and it's going to be caught by Morgan. Joe catching it just in fair territory. And to give you some idea what kind of distance he went to get it, almost to the pitching rubber in the bullpen, or at least parallel to that spot, as he split Griffey and Dreesen to make the running catch and end the inning. Three up and three down after three and a half. The Reds and the Cardinals, nothing, nothing. Big Red Smokies, Cons Plump and Juicy Wieners, and Cons Delicious Brush. Three hits at Riverfront Stadium and your home. Eat them at Riverfront Stadium and buy them at your favorite store. The Big Red Machine is rolling down the street with three big hits that can be beat. Cons! You can depend on Cons. When mapping out your vacation travel plans, make sure you include a stop in Cincinnati so you can see the world champion Reds at Riverfront Stadium. You'll see great Major League Baseball in one of the most comfortable, beautiful ballparks in the country. And Cincinnati offers a lot more to vacationers, too, like museums, comfortable shopping, outstanding restaurants, and excellent accommodations. 
There's a lot of history and tradition in the Queen City, not to mention the oldest professional baseball team in America. Make the Reds a part of your vacation this summer. Write the Reds' office for schedule and ticket information. Here's Morgan. Here's Denny as we go to the home fourth, the ball outside. Reds have had two hits, both by Pete Rose, a first inning double, a third inning single. Morgan struck out in the first. He swings and hits one in the air to left field. Brock moving in a couple of paces, and he makes a catch. So Joe Morgan's problems at the plate continue. His first two times up tonight against John Denny. With one out, the batter will be Dan Dreesen. Danny, like Morgan in the first inning, took strike three. Ball one. Denny not only has won five and lost none, but he is the only five-game winner in the major leagues right now. Two balls and no strikes. Didn't win his fifth game last season until the 17th of July and posted his sixth victory of 76 on August 6th, so it gives you some idea what kind of fast start he has this year over last. He's three balls and no strikes against Dan as he comes high and the ball hitting off the end of Simmons' mid and rolling onto the backstop. Well, the one thing Denny has not done is walk anybody. But now he needs to find the control as he comes 3-0. That's high, and Dreesen is on with a walk on four straight. So with one out, there's one on. Let's see what Foster can do. Denny induced him to bounce out to the shortstop, Templeton, leading off the second. So the third base runner of the night on for Cincinnati against Denny and the Cardinals. Rose has had two hits, and now Dreesen reaches with a one-out fourth inning walk. Infield, double play depth. Denny straddling the pitching rubber as he comes to the belt. Yachty away from the plate. And back in. Swung on. Base hit left field. Grease into second. Brock back to the infield with a baseball, and we've got him at first and second with one out. Johnny Bench. Then he got him to hit one right off the end of the bat in the second for a routine ground out to Tyson. The Reds threatening in the first inning but could not score and now have two fourth inning runners on with one out. Bench leveling the bat and now waiting. Line smash up the middle, hit the center field. That's going to score Dreesen. The throw going to second base. Foster will stay there and it's one nothing as Bench drives in the first run of the game. John Denny experiencing problems after getting Morgan on a fly ball to left to begin the inning. A walk to Dreesen and singles by Foster and Bench. And the Reds had the first run of the night. Johnny with his 10th run batted in. Teddy Simmons out to the mound to talk with his pitcher as Geronimo waits to step in. Purchase tickets in advance at the Reds Ticket Agency nearest you in Eaton, Ohio at Preble County National Bank, in Newark at Sears, in Kokomo, Indiana at Sanborns, and in Frankfort, Kentucky at Sears. Reds one, Cardinals nothing, two on, one in, one out. 0 for 1 on the night, Geronimo grounded to short in the second inning. Denny works to the plate, the Chief takes a strike. Had a winning streak stop yesterday, and hopefully we'll start another one up here tonight. Chopper foul, that's at the plate. After the Wednesday night game to wrap up the series in the homestand, we'll have another off day on Thursday, and then we'll be emanating from Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh on Friday night. First of a seven-game road trip that will have a trio of games to be played against Chuck Tanner's Bucks and then four against the same Cardinal club beginning Monday night. High fastball, one and two. 
will be Friday night against Pittsburgh, Saturday, Sunday afternoon games, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night in St. Louis, and next Thursday, a week from this Thursday, a day game to close out the road trip. Here's a fly ball hit back into left field. Brock goes back. He makes a catch. Foster halfway down the line. Heads on back into second. Bench likewise to first. And with a second out of the inning recorded, the batter will be Doug Flynn. Doug lined a shortstop in the last inning. He was the first batter up against inning. Doug getting his first start of the season tonight. He swings on the pitch, fouls it out of play to the right. Rarely, if ever, is there a night or day game here at Riverfront that Doug's folks don't come up from Lexington to see the Reds perform. And they are in attendance here tonight. One strike count, pitch. Strike two call. The Flynn family is a golfing family. His dad was not here for the Saturday game. He had a golf tournament to perform in and won it, shooting a 76. Doug Flynn, no slouch on the golf course himself, along with Brother Brad. Change is high and away as Simmons set the target on the outside part of the plate, but Denny, Denny could not get it down. One ball, two strikes. Foster at second base, Johnny Bench at first, two out, one nothing Cincinnati in the fourth inning. High fastball, two and two. Freddie Norman on deck, Denny trying to end the inning right here. Flynn strikes out swinging on an off-speed breaking ball away from him. In the inning, the Reds dent the plate, getting one run on two hits. They strand a couple. And as we move to the fifth inning, it is Cincinnati 1 and St. Louis nothing. In baseball, the winning team has professionals with plenty of hustle and willing to do the best job possible. The people that make up Clark Lift of Columbus feel the same way. They're proud of having the best name in Lift trucks, Clark. Clark Lift of Columbus is made up of professionals, too, and each salesman and serviceman is ready and willing to do the best job for you, the customer. Each employee at Clark Lift is part of the team, and it's a winning team with plenty of hustle. For new or used lift trucks, or if you want to lease or rent, go first class with the winners, Clark Trucks, and the whole Clark Lift of Columbus team. Clark Lift of Columbus, serving all of Central Ohio, at 850 Harmon Avenue. Remember, you don't just buy a lift truck, you get the whole Clark Lift of Columbus team. See Clark Lift, the Clark dealer with plenty of hustle, at 850 Harmon Avenue. We move to the top of the fifth inning, and Freddie Norman has a run with which to work, thanks to Johnny Bench's run scoring single in the last inning, getting Danny Dreesen in. Norman has pitched four innings of hitless, runless baseball. The only man who has reached on him was Kenny Reitz, who was hit by a pitch leading off the third. But right after that, Mike Tyson banged into a 6-4-3 double play, so Norman has faced a minimum 12 batters in the first four innings. Hector Cruz bouncing a shot off Norman's leg in the second inning that rolled dead just to the first base side of the mound. Freddie turned it into a routine outplay. Norman has struck out two, getting Denny in the third and striking out Templeton in the fourth inning. Here's Cruz in and waiting now as Norman sights a sign from bench and sends in the pitch. That is hit off first base and dropping back into the seats of foul ball. Strike one. Cruz has hit safely in eight of his last nine, batting 467, going 14 for 30. To hike that batting average well over the 300 mark. That one bounced up there. One ball and one strike. Joe mentioned the fact that Mike Lacoste was pitching for Indianapolis tonight 
against Wichita. We got some very, very eye-popping numbers concerning Tommy Hume earlier tonight. Gotten off to such a great start for Roy Matika's club as won his first three games. Here's a 1-1 to Cruz. That is hit into right field. Ken Griffey tracking it and makes the catch. Now, Hume is uh, supposed to go tomorrow night against Wichita, but he has pitched 30 and a third scoreless innings dating back to his last start in 1976. This year, he's re reeled off 21 and a third scoreless innings. The American Association record is 42 scoreless innings. So Tommy Hume is 11 and two-thirds away from tying that record. Here's ball one high and inside to Simmons. Simmons grounding out to short in the second. Strike to him. Good pitch. Letter high on the inside. Tonight's stumper, Pete Rose, has now hit safely in 17 consecutive games. Who holds a club record for the longest Reds batting streak? Missing outside, ball two, two and one. Talking so much of late about our Triple A Club Indianapolis, that three rivers team over the weekend beat Jersey City twenty one to three and fourteen to nothing. Strike two call. They lead the Eastern League with a record of ten wins and five losses. Two balls, two strikes, Norman with Simmons, one out. A one nothing game, Reds in the fifth. High and inside as Simmons spins out of the box and drops his bat. I tell you, Norman throwing hard. He's really exerting himself right now, right. Marty. He's really pumping up. Three and two, he's as far as he can go with Simmons. Left-hander with a pitch, and he walked him. Coming high with a heater. Simmons gets a first walk allowed by Norman. And as Hernandez comes to the plate, we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds radio network. WMNI FM, Columbus, Ohio. If you'd like a complete 1977 Cincinnati Red schedule, both home and away, send a self addressed stamped envelope to WMNI FM, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Norman surrendering a one-out walk to Simmons, facing Hernandez, who he got to fly to Geronimo in the second. Stretching the pitch, strike his call. Hernandez has been awfully, awfully tough against left-handed pitching this season, batting 400, 14 hits and 35 times up. He's a left-handed batter. He... Gets it in there for a strike. Hernandez wanted to go, held up, and it cost him nothing in two the count. One out, one on, two strikes. But Kenny Reitz waiting on deck. Pitch, low and away. Run on four hits for the Reds, no runs, no hits for the Cardinals as... St. Louis is hitting in the fifth. Dreesen playing behind Simmons, about three feet off the bag. Hernandez, it looked like he got around on it. Nope. Third base umpire Montague called it. Breaking ball, and Hernandez a bit confused about what to do with it. The call goes his way and levels the count at two and two. Norman a bit perturbed over the call. Goes to the rising bag and now comes back atop the summit. Checking in with Wire to get the count and sends in the 2 2 pitch. Ball three. High. Full count. Three two pitch with a runner going and the ball is pulled foul into the Cincinnati dugout and then out again. 
Only three other games on the National League card tonight. Philadelphia playing at San Diego. Probables there. Wayne Twitchell against Tom Griffin. New York at L.A. We mentioned that matchup. Kuzman and Rao. And through three and a half in Atlanta. Pittsburgh two, Atlanta one. Ed Ott with a first inning solo blast for the Pirates. The first of his major league career. And young outfielder Brian Asselstein is homered for Atlanta in the second with nobody on. Again, the 3-2 offering to Hernandez. High pop on the infield. Calling is Morgan. Makes a catch, two out. Hernandez retired for the second out in the Cardinal fifth. And here's Ken Reitz, who, before Simmons walked earlier in this inning, had been the only Cardinal base runner. Freddie hitting with a pitch leading off the third. Outfield will play Reed straight away. Swing and a miss. Reed's hitting 213. Is homered once. Is knocked in nine. Last year in a giant uniform. Hit Reds pitching at a 266 clip with 10 RBIs. Missing the outside corner. Ball in a strike. into his stretch working popped out of play back of the plate and the count of one ball and two strikes and obviously somebody made a major league play on that pop up and it reached over the upper deck and caught it a cap a cap catch takes all kinds Norman out in front of the Cardinal third baseman, one and two. Simmons at first with two out. Stretching the pitch. High for a ball, two and two. One nothing Cincinnati. Freddie's 2-2 delivery, and he struck him out swinging. For the fifth inning in a row, the Cardinals go hitless. No runs, no hits, one left. Through four and one half, the Reds over the Cardinals, one to nothing. Everyone out there who loves you dancing, take some time and let your feelings show. With some dancing music from the first of the show. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan, family brewed for more than 200 years. Bottom half of the fifth inning, it's a 1-0 count. The Reds leading the Cardinals, and in answer to our scoreboard stumper, who holds the Cincinnati Reds club record for... Hitting in the most consecutive games, two players actually hold that record. Ed Roush and Beta Pinson, at various stages of their big league careers, hit in 27 consecutive games. Well, Pete Rose, who has gone two for two tonight against John Denny, now is 10 games away from tying the Reds club record. Freddie Norman getting a big hand as he steps in to lead off our fifth inning. He bounced to the mound in the third. Denny has been touched for four hits. But the Reds got to him in the fourth to score the only run. Norman takes the first pitch and off-speeder for a ball. Strike to him, one and one. 
Perfect hitting Pete is on deck. Grounder to the box. Denny Spears turns and throws one down. Now we go to Rose, who doubled just inside the left field line in the first inning and lined a single to left in the third. Jumping his batting average up to a lofty 351. The two hits in the game now give Pete a total of 26. While the National League leaders in that department, Billy Russell of the Dodgers has hit in 32, has had 32 base hits. Rose fouling off the first pitch. Ron Say of the Dodgers has had 31. Then Dave Parker of Pittsburgh, Dave Winfield of San Diego, and Cardinal catcher Simmons have all had 30. Denny's 0-1. Missing one ball and one strike. That's low ball two. Pete picking up the baseball as it kicked away from Simmons and Lee Wire with a quick inspection before sending it on to the mound. Two balls and a strike on Rose with one out. Denny to the motion. He delivers. Pete swings. Line smash. Caught by Templeton at shortstop. Third straight time that Rose has hit the ball right on the button. That one a liner hit to the glove side of Templeton who came up with it. That ball almost handcuffed Templeton. He uh, had it kind of, uh, well, on the tips of his fingers, you might say. That Pete really slammed it. was coming back at uh, Templeton. Really almost overran it also. So two away for Griffey, who has bounced out twice. Fastball backs him off the plate. Kenny grounding out Hernandez to Denny in the first inning and then bouncing out Tyson to Hernandez in the third. Now hitting at 341. Swings at the change. One ball, one strike. This is the sixth game that the Reds have been involved in against an Eastern Division opponent. Of course, all five of the previous contests against the Cubs, of which the Reds won two. While against Western Division competition, we won seven and lost eight. So a win tonight would get us one game toward the 500 mark. Strike is called at the knees inside corner. One and two. Denny retired the side in order in the first and the second. Trying to do it here in the fifth. Out ahead of Griffey with Morgan waiting on deck. Taking a long look into Simmons and now Kenny steps away as Denny gets to the top of his wine. pitch. Grounded toward the second baseman Tyson who takes a head high hop and throws him out. Reds are out one, two, three. And after five complete, Cincinnati one and St. Louis nothing. From the driller in Alaska to the roundabout in Texas from the driver in Atlanta to the welder in Wyoming Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning it into something people can use is another. We got people together we thought could do it better, and we called the company Marathon. From the engineer in Denver to the trucker in Ohio from the salesman in Chicago to the foreman in Nebraska We got together Marathon. Marathon Oil Company. We got together to do it better. Joe Knoxall and Marty Brenneman back at Riverfront as we move on to the sixth inning of what has so far been a rapidly played ball game at Riverfront. Only run coming across in the fourth inning. That delivered home on a Johnny Bench single to center field, driving Dan Dreesen in from second. Danny had drawn a one-out walk and had moved to that bag on Foster's base hit to left field. In the American League, only three games on the schedule tonight, and one of them 
Obviously, this is going to be a continuing problem all season as long as the Blue Jays continue to play in Toronto. We get a very short, terse report on the Western Union sports ticker. Toronto score unavailable. They're playing Milwaukee tonight. We have no idea what's going on up there. We do know that at the end of four in Baltimore, Oakland with Rick Langford leads Rudy May and the Orioles 2-0. Chicago, Kansas City scoreless after one with Francisco Barrios against Dennis Leonard. Here's a line drive, base hit to left field by Mike Tyson. First hit that Norman has given up is Tyson, the Cardinal second baseman, jumping on Freddie's first pitch. And lines a clean single to left. You can bet in a close ball game, John Denny's going to be trying to bunt him along to second base. Then he was called out on strikes in the third inning. So Norman pitching five innings of no-hit baseball before a Cardinal batter, in this case Mike Tyson, finds a mark. Rose is in very shallow at third. Denny squaring, takes it high, throw to first base, and Morgan had to come up with that ball on a hop as he was sneaking in behind Tyson coming back. Johnny Bench taking a shot. Maybe we can get him coming back in, but Tyson made it. One ball and no strikes on Denny. The 1-0 bunted along the first baseline, but trickling foul. Ball one, strike one. Denny looking down to third base coach Jack Kroll. Sonny Roberto, who was a player coach under Vern Rapp when Vern was managing the Reds AAA Farm Club at Indianapolis. He's a first base coach for the Cardinals. Pitcher against pitcher. One and one as Tyson takes his lead. Here's a pop-up on the bunt attempt, but foul and untouched off first base. One and two. Meanwhile, in Indianapolis, at the end of two, the Indians lead Wichita two to nothing. Joe mentioned Mike Buffy Lacoste pitching that game. Yesterday, the Indians lost in ten, eight to four. Paul Moscow suffered his first loss of the season. Norman, a ball, two strikes on Denny. He kicks and he throws. Denny wants to bunt. Pops it up. Norman calls. He will let it All fall. Right. He throws to second. Flynn throws to first. Heads up play by Freddie Norman, who saw very quickly that John Denny was not even attempting to run to first base. He let it fall. He threw to Flynn. Tyson out. Threw to Dreesen. Denny out. Double play. Well, Marty, I tell you, that's uh, John Denny. I'm sure he's really kicking himself. And Freddie, the ball was quite high in the air and Fred looked at home plate and saw Denny standing there and he gambled on the leaving the ball drop and it worked out perfectly and I tell you it's a tough play for base runners but had Denny been running until the ball was caught then he's safe no way you can get the double play but he stood at home plate rather uh, observantly and uh, it cost him Two out on a heads-up play by Fred Norman, who was all the while eyeing Denny as well as making up his mind about what to do with that pop-up. Here's Lou Brock. Pitch outside a ball. Brock is grounded out twice. Swings, bounces to Morgan. Joe has it. He throws him out. That's the inning. No runs. One hit. Nobody left on. We move to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's Reds one, Cardinals nothing. When you have a family, you just can't do it alone. It brings me to a every day. It brings me to a With you all the way. Your partner in protection. Two heads are better than one, especially when the name of the game is comedy. Amos and Andy, Laura and Hardy, Abbott and Costello, Punch and Judy, perfect partners, good to the last guffaw. 
Business insurance is no laughing matter. That's why you should select a Grange agent to be your partner in protection. Grange Commercial Custom Coverage lets you sleep nights. Let Grange do the worrying. That's what partners are for. Listen, when your Grange agent says, let's be partners. Grange Mutual. With you all the way. Your partner in protection. When you have a family, you just can't do it alone. The Cardinals wind up the current homestand Wednesday night here at Riverfront. Game time 8.05 and plenty of seats and all prices are available. After Wednesday's game, the Reds are on the road until Friday, May 13th, when the club returns home for the start of a big nine-game homestand. There's a weekend series with Joe Alabelli's Giants, two games with the Pirates, and then a weekend with the Mets. Plan now to be on hand for all the action. Be sure to purchase your tickets in advance. Bottom of the sixth inning, and for Cincinnati, Joe Morgan, Danny Dreesen, George Foster. Morgan, a strikeout on a fly ball to left and two tries against the Cardinal ace right-hander. Talking with Byrne Rabb before the game tonight about what's going on with Larry Durker, who suffered a broken ankle in spring training. Durker was left behind in Florida, pitching for the Cardinal Farm club down there in the Florida State League. Here's a pitch to Joe. He swings, bounces over the mound. Could be a tough play. Templeton gloves. He quick throws to Hernandez, and they get the out. Actually, Templeton, who we talked about his range earlier tonight, was on the first base side of second when he fielded Morgan's ground ball and threw him out. Here's Danny Dreesen. Vern was telling us that Durker pitched three innings in relief last week and will start tomorrow night. Dreesen a smash to right field. It's going to be caught by her, by Cruz, and that ball almost drove him back into the right field fence. It was hit so hard. Apparently got it caught up in the lights. That's created the problem and a bit of indecision for Hector Cruz, but he played it anyway. So quickly, two down in the red sixth inning for George Foster. Almost caught that the old jawbone. Boy, he did. Foster had a base hit in the fourth inning to set up the Cincinnati run. Well, Durker will start tomorrow night, and then they plan on having him join the club in maybe, oh, four or five days. And Vern Rapp was saying if everything goes according to their plans, that Durker might be able to get into the Cardinal rotation sometime toward the middle or late May. High inside fastball. The Reds leading one nothing. We are two outs into the home sixth inning and nobody's on. Denny has given the Reds four hits. The Cardinals have been able to come up with only Mike Tyson's sixth inning single off Fred Norman. Again in on him, ball two. Cardinals have been going with four pitchers in their rotation. This man, of course, along with Bob Forsh. Eric Rasmussen and left-hander Pete Falcone, but now when the off days start to become a thing of history, they're going to run John DiAquisto out there as a fifth starter until Durker's ready to go. There's ball three. Denny needing a strike. Pitch away from putting George on with two outs. And there is strike one call. Three one. That's high. George flips the bat end over end and goes on down to first base. This reminder, the second team night of the year is set for Friday, May 13th. The Reds will be battling the Giants here. Guys and gals to age 19 may purchase 350 reserve seats for only a dollar and a half. Second walk to Reds batters. It extends the inning for Johnny Bench, who singled in the game's only run with a base hit to center in the fourth. He hits a very high fly ball toward Scott in left center, and he makes a play to end the inning. No runs, no hits, one left, 
We move to the seventh. Reds one. Cardinals nothing. Strohs presents a musical beer break. Shortstop Gary Templeton will be standing in for openers against Freddie Norman and the Reds as we move on to the seventh inning. Run four hits for Cincinnati, no runs, a hit for the Cardinals, a classic pitching duel involving the left-hander and a veteran Freddie Norman and relatively new John Denny to the major league scene. Norman, brilliant six innings of work. Templeton will be the leadoff batter and back to paint the word picture for you. Here's Joe. All right, Marty, Templeton, Scott, Cruz here in the seventh for the Cardinals. Gary Templeton, 0 for 2, he grounded a short in the first inning, went down swinging in the fourth. Freddie Norman has struck out three, has walked one, his hit a batter. Hit Ken Reeves back in the third inning, Reeves became the first base runner, and then Tyson bounced into a 6-4-3 double play. He walked Ted Simmons in the fifth. Tyson singled in the sixth inning, who was out on a double play on the bun attempt by John Denny. All right, Norman ready to go to work to Templeton. His first pitch on the way, and Templeton takes it high a ball. one nothing. Reds leading. Scoring that one run in the fourth inning. Norman looking for his second win of the year. He delivers the 1-0. Swung on, that's hit into center field. Geronimo on the run, makes the play. Ball right on the button, a line drive, and the Chief made an easy play out of it. A one down, and Tony Scott steps to the plate. Scott 0 for 2, a fly ball to the left, and a pop to Morgan, and here's two times the plate. Norman delivers to Scott down low a ball. One oh on the way. Swung on. That's a broken bat soft liner into left field where Foster will play at the base hit for Scott. He makes the big turn, slips and falls at first. And Scott limping as he goes back to the bag, only turning his ankle. So hit number two for the Cardinals belongs to Scott. He's at first base. And that'll bring Cruz to the plate. Now Vern Rapp and the Cardinal trainer jogging out to first base to see what the problem is. Scott, uh, well, I'm not sure exactly what has happened now. He might have done something to his back as he reaches to touch his toes. Jogging down the right field line to make sure everything is all right. And apparently it is. Oh, one out. Scott at first base. And Cruz steps in. He's 0 for 2. He bounced to the mound. Or I shouldn't say bounced. He hit a shot back at the mound. He hit Freddie on the legs. He picked it up and threw him out. And then a fly ball to right field in the fifth inning. Scott with good speed. He's stolen two bases, been caught once. Not a good lead for Tony. Stretching the pitch by Norman. That's swung on and missed. 
Well, Cruz trying to put the Cardinals ahead with one swing. Jack Kroll, the third base coach, flashing a sign. Scott off the bag at first. The stretch by Norman. And a throw over to first base. Scott steps back. On one the count to Cruz. Heidi, if you will. Norman ready. And delivered. Cruz takes it down low. A slider. One and one. Our field is straight away. Rows deep at third. Ted Simmons on deck. Norman sets. And the pitch. Runner goes and swung on and foul. Into the Cincinnati dugout. On the hit and run. So the count goes the ball two strikes to Cruz. Freddie Norman pitched very well through six innings here tonight. Both have. He and John Denny. It's been a real pitcher's battle. Freddie, a ball, two strikes with Cruz. Scott leads at first. Norman the stretch. And the pitch. Screwball down low, and it's even a two and two. Pirates leading the Braves 7-1 to one now, seventh inning. The game being played at Atlanta Stadium. Ready has the sign from bench. And the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, has hit off the shoulder. Freddie Norman bounces to Morgan. Up, throwing in time. He got him. And apparently the ball hit in Freddie's glove. It looked like it might have hit him on his shoulder, but not so. Freddie pounding in his glove, and apparently everything all right. But it looked like the ball struck Freddie on the shoulder, but it didn't. It hit him in the glove. Goes on to Morgan, where Morgan picks it up barehanded and throws Cruz out. Moving on to second base is Scott, and we'll pause for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Tyson walk goes to Ted Simmons. We'll put him at first with Scott at second and two away. Keith Hernandez will be the batter. Hernandez is 0 for 2, a fly ball to center, and a pop to second. Ball four, and Simmons moves on to first base. Keith Hernandez, a 323 batting average, four home runs, and 17 RBIs. All right, Freddie steps on to the pitching rubber and looks in the bench. As is signed, he's to the belt, checks the runners, and delivers to Hernandez. It's swung on and missed a high fastball. Reds lead him one to nothing. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Hernandez backs away from the plate, now steps back in. Hernandez, a left handed batter. Scott leads at second. Simmons at first. Norman, the 0-1. Swung on, ground ball to Morgan. Easy play. On to Dreesen. That's it. Well, in the inning for the Cardinals, no runs. They get a hit. There were no errors and two runners left on base. And it's the middle of the seventh. Cincinnati 1, St. Louis nothing.
Why don't you try Red Fox? Look for it in the white pouch with the picture of old Red taking it easy. Red Fox chewing tobacco. Now it's better than ever. So when that highway starts to call, run with the fox and beat some old Red Fox. Because Mr. Taking It Easy never tasted so good. Red Fox. I have a couple of changes in the Cardinal lineup. Hector Cruz comes in from right field, and he'll be at third base, and Mike Anderson goes into the lineup in right field. Ken Reeves out. Whether it's an injury problem with Ken Reeves, we cannot tell you at this moment. Reeves would have let off the eighth inning for St. Louis. For the Reds, the bottom three in the order, Geronimo, Flynn, and Norman. They lead it one to nothing. John Denny has allowed the Reds four hits and struck out three, walked two. The chief hold for two has grounded to short and a fly ball to left in his two times the plate. Yeah, that'll be nice to tack on a couple of runs here. Denny ready to work to Cesar Geronimo. He has the sign, the wind, and the pitch on the way as a breaking ball in for a called strike. Denny, of course, the leader in ERA in the National League last year with a 252 mark. He's allowed just one run tonight, the pitch high and outside a fastball. The moment Denny with a 291 earned run average coming in to tonight's ball game. One ball, one strike. Denny back to the plate. And it's high and outside again. Two and one as Al Rabowski heads to the Cardinal bullpen to start throwing. Along with John Urea. Two and one the count to Geronimo leading off here in the seventh. The Reds leading one to nothing. The pitch. Low and inside. Three balls to strike to the team. Roboski and Urea throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. Roboski, of course, the left hander. The right hander, Urea. Three one delivery. Swung on and popped foul. That will drop into the seats out of play off to the left. Then he asked for another baseball from plate umpire Lee Wire. Full count to Geronimo. Does Flynn on deck? And he's 3-2 delivery. Swung on. That's grounded to Tyson at second. He back pedals. Has it. Goes on to Hernandez. One away. One down. And Doug Flynn steps in. Doug 0 for 2. He lined to short in the third inning. And went down swinging in the fourth. Well, the Reds like to win these two games from the Cardinals. And leave on our next road trip to Pittsburgh and St. Louis. At 500 for the year. First pitch to Flynn, a breaking ball outside. A wind the pitch. Swung on, bounced back to the mound. Nice play, Denny off to the left of the mound. He has it, throws to Hernandez, out number two. That'll bring Freddie Norman to the plate. And Fred gets a nice hand from the crowd here. It's just a fine baseball game, 2 7. Freddie 0 for 2 at both times is bounced to the mound. Then he delivers, and Norman takes it a call to strike. Strength two call. Quickly, Denny out in front of Norman, 0 and 2. The pitch down low. 
A ball of two strikes to Norman. Here's the one, two. Swung on, that's bounced to Hernandez at first. He'll underhand. Denny falls down, and Norman is safe. And apparently, John Denny is full of hamstring muscle in his left leg. He's on his back just before you reach the first base in the dirt. And apparently, John has pulled a hamstring, or at least he's holding the back of his left leg, and that'll go as a base hit for Freddie Norman, but just as Denny got to the sliding area, he went down and quite possibly stepped in the crease there and pulled the muscle, but he's on his back right now, the Cardinal trainer out, along with Vern Rapp and the old Cardinal infield, along with Russ Nixon and Freddie Norman there, looking down at John, so certainly hope it's nothing serious. He's sitting up now, but he's still holding the back of his left leg, and whether he pulled a hamstring or suffered a severe cramp there, we'll just have to wait and see. Denny just now getting back to his feet, and boy, that would be a tough loss for the Cardinals. And Larry Jerker, of course, is trying to get back into shape after breaking an ankle this spring. Then he on his feet now, and apparently having trouble putting pressure on that left leg. And he'll probably leave, and we'll see who they'll call in from the Cardinal bullpen. Roboski in the area throwing, and we'll see who it might be. It's going to be Al Roboski to come on to face. Pete Rose with two out and Norman at first base. Freddie credited with a base hit. Benny limping. Very noticeably. In fact, a couple of players came out to help him. And now Rabowski will come on here in the seventh inning with two out. So while Rabowski will take his warm ups, we have a break in the action here at Riverfront. We'll be back after this work. Swingers, something for everyone, Kings Island, for you. If you'd like to get together with a good crowd for a good time, we've got a good suggestion for you. With 25 or more people from a school, company, or organization, you can take advantage of special group rates to visit Kings Island. There's something for everyone with over 100 rides, shows, and attractions, including the brand new Wild Animal Safari, Hooray for Hollywood, and the wild new scream and demon that will really knock you for a loop. Contact Kings Island for more information, and you can combine your trip to watch the world champion Cincinnati Reds with a trip to Kings King's Island. Open weekend and daily starting Memorial Day. New pitcher is Al Robowski, and Al making his eighth appearance of the year. That's a 270 earned run average. He's working 10 in the third innings, allowing 11 hits. And struck out 11, walked two, and he has been credited with two saves. That five saves on the Cardinal staff, two to Robowski, three to Urea, who was throwing down in the Cardinal bullpen. He's been joined down there by left-hander Buddy Schultz. Well, Al Robowski, of course, will be allowed all time necessary to get loose. And certainly we hope that the injury to John Denny is not serious. The way he left the field, limping quite noticeably and possibly, well, we'll just have to wait and see what the report is. But certainly we hope that it's nothing serious. Probably Eastwick throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. Roboski completes his warm-up and he goes down behind the mound. Looking in the center field, rubbing up the baseball and getting things together, I guess you'd call it. And he'll take a sharp right turn, I believe. Nope, make it a left turn, and here he comes. <laughs> I guess 
once it helps, he says it does. You know one thing, and against Atlanta the other night, he did quite a job. We were listening to the game on the way home, and wow, what a job he did. Pitch to Rose is swung on and fouled out of play. Pete has two of the five hits the Reds have had tonight. And his last time up was out on a fine play by the young shortstop of the Cardinals, Gary Templeton, on a low liner. Templeton moving off to his left to pick it off. He doubled in the first, singled in the third. Both hits going to left field to double down the line. Norman in first base, two away, one to nothing Reds. Robowski sets and delivers. Rose takes low ball. One to one. Was Vern Rapp's dress code? No beards, no mustaches. And last year, Mr. Rabowski had a full beard, and he did look scary. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swung on, a very high pop right side. Hernandez in foul territory over near the Reds' dugout. Now goes back toward the foul line to make the play. In foul territory, and that's it for the Reds. In the inning, no runs hit, no errors. The runner left on base. And after seven, the score, the Reds won, the Cardinals nothing. Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning it into something people can use is another. It takes a lot of people with different skills and different talents to get that job done. We got people together we thought could do it better. And we called the company Marathon. From the driller in Alaska To the routabout in Texas From the driver in Atlanta left the rest of the jobs to somebody else. But we had this idea that we could do it better. So we got people together who thought the same way we did. We got together to do it better. We Marathon. Marathon Oil Company. We got together to do it better. Well, we've completed seven innings in a well-pitched ball game by Freddie Norman and John Denny. The Reds lead it one to nothing. They've had five hits in the game. The Cardinals have had two. It'll be Mike Anderson to lead it off in the eighth inning for St. Louis and back for the action, Marty Brenneman. Okay, thank you, Joe. Anderson coming in to play right field with Hector Cruz moving to third base and Kenny Reitz moving to the dugout when the Reds came to bat in the bottom of the inning. So Anderson... Batting in the spot formerly held by Reitz will start it off. Then Mike Tyson, and we note that Roger Freed has selected a bat down the Cardinal dugout, so apparently he's going to pinch hit for Al Roboski. Anderson, formerly with the Philadelphia Phillies, has been to the plate 12 times, has had three hits, one of them a home run. He's knocked in three runs. Right-handed batter. Norman ready to go to work as he delivers and the pitch is taken inside a ball. Reds have made a couple of defensive changes on the left side of the infield. Davy Concepcion has come on to play shortstop with Doug Flynn moving from short to third. Rose is out. 1-0 pitch. Foul back and the count evens at one ball and one strike. Raleigh Eastwick getting ready for Cincinnati while in the Cardinal bullpen... Left-hander Buddy Schultz and right-hander John Urea. One ball, one strike on Mike Anderson, who waits on the pitch, and here it is. Missing low, screw ball, two and one. Only run of the game coming in the fourth inning on Johnny Bench's RBI single to center field. Norman behind as he works to Anderson, and that is high ball three. Well, you can bet that Freddie wants to finish, but with only one run separating the two clubs, Sparky Anderson will not hesitate to call on Raleigh Eastwick. Well, they've changed right-handers in the Cardinal bullpen. Here's a swing and a foul by Anderson. Clay Carroll, affectionately known around Reds country as the Hawk, has picked up where Urea left off. Three balls and two strikes. 
Norman taking a little bit extra time. Bench in the crouch behind the plate, sending out the sign, and Norman with a big 3-2 pitch. He walked him. High fastball. So the Cardinals begin the eighth by Mike Anderson coaxing a walk from Freddie Norman. It'll bring up Mike Tyson. As Tyson checks in with Jack Kroll and Roger Freed has moved on deck. We're going to get a pitch runner at first base, Joel Youngblood, who, of course, was with our ball club last year before being traded over to the Cardinals in spring training for Mike Caldwell. Youngblood at first is a pinch runner. Norman has given up his third walk. Here is a pitch to Tyson. He takes a strike after squaring the bunt. So things start to get a little bit interesting here in the eighth inning. The Cardinals needing only a run to tie things up. Freddie Norman has issued a walk to the leadoff batter. Mike Anderson, who promptly turns over the running chores to Joel Youngblood. Tyson, who had the first Cardinal hit in the sixth inning, a single to left. Here's a pop bunt foul off the first base side. And the count is no balls and two strikes. I think we said the Reds traded Youngblood for Caldwell. They traded him for pitcher Bill Caudle who was on the Cardinal 40-man Major League roster, a pitcher who's now performing in the Reds' minor league system. Nothing in two. Flynn will still play in shallow at third for Tyson. Norman with a stretch. In with a pitch. Tyson swings and he misses. He struck him out. right there and for Freddie Norman his fourth strikeout he'll now go to work on Roger Free let's check out what Roger's done so far with the Cardinals this season he was a big basher for Vern Rapp's Denver Club last season in the American Association and thus far this season with a big club has been up five times has delivered two hits one of them a home run and has knocked in two runs. He has hit one of tremendous amount of home runs in his minor league career. Right-handed batter. Pitches inside and high for ball one. Formerly with the Cincinnati Reds, also with the Phillies, was in the Baltimore organization. Freed has been around but hopes that he has found a home with Vern Rapp and the Cardinal team. 1-0 pitch. Taken down and in ball two. Two and nothing. Freddie Norman trying to protect the scattest of leads. One to nothing in the eighth inning. Young blood leading against a holding Danny Dreesen. The infield, a double play depth. The 2-0 delivery. That's high, ball three. Well, you would think that with the way Mr. Anderson likes to go to that bullpen, especially in situations such as this, should Freed walk, you might well look for Raleigh Eastwick to come on and face Lou Brock. Norman's 3-0 pitch. That is strike one call out away from it. One man out, one man on. Freed in the pitch. Swung on, blast to left center field. That's into the gap. Geronimo has to go to the wall to pick it off. They're going to wave Youngblood toward the plate. Concepcion will not even attempt to throw home, and Roger Freed's pitch double to left center has tied things up here in the eighth inning at one and one. Youngblood scores from first base on Freed's double of the power alley in left center. The Cardinal dugout erupting. 
And now manager Vern Rapp is going to send in a pinch runner out at second base for the slow of foot Roger Freed. It's going to be Jerry Devannon. Now many times have we talked about the pitcher's number one enemy, and that's a base on balls, and it's certainly come back to haunt Freddie Norman here in the eighth. Tie game at a run apiece. Brock at the plate with Devannon running at second base. Lou Brock has bounced out three times. He takes the pitch outside. Report on John Denny. He was forced to leave the game because of a severe cramp in his left hamstring muscle. One zero pitch, swing and a foul. Count even a ball on the strike. One man out with a run home. Have a new Cardinal pitcher in when the Reds come to bat in the bottom of the eighth. Three straight left-handers coming up. You would have to think that Vern Rapp will go with Buddy Schultz. Brock checking his swing on a high fastball. Two and one. Well, the way Norman has dominated the Cardinals in the first seven innings, you would have to think that here in the eighth, he may be showing signs of getting a bit tired. Party, uh, along with John Denny's injury, a cramp uh, by now, Kenny Reese had to leave uh, because of that where he was hit on the arm by Freddie Norman early in the ball game. Well, we thought that was a somewhat strange move, but that answers the question. Here's a drive to deep center field. Geronimo going back, still on the run, can't play it. Ball bounces all over the fence and then comes back into the ballpark. They're going to score Devannon as Lou Brock goes to straightaway center for a two-base hit that took one hop and bounced over and then came back into the ballpark. So back-to-back eighth-inning doubles following the leadoff walk to Mike Anderson has given the Cardinals two runs, and they lead it by one. Sparky Anderson is on, and Freddie Norman is out. His right hander Raleigh Eastwick will now be summoned from the Cincinnati bullpen. break for Norman, who had really pitched seven innings of fine, fine baseball. He leaves after going seven and a third. The Cardinals get only four hits off of him. He struck out four and walked three, but unless Cincinnati can come back in their next two at-bats, Norman is going to be hung with his second loss of the year. Eastwick just now reaching the Riverfront Stadium mound as he makes his tenth appearance of the season. His only decisions have been two losses, but an earned run average that stands at 212. And among the five saves that the Reds' bullpen core has chalked up, Raleigh has received credit for four. 16 and two-thirds innings, he's given up 13 hits with eight strikeouts, two walks, four runs against him, and all have been earned runs. And the Cardinal offense coming alive in the eighth inning. When Anderson led off with a walk, Joel Youngblood came in to pinch run for him, and he scored all the way from first. After Tyson had struck out on pinch hitter Roger Freed's double to left center, Devannon went in to run for Freed, and Lou Brock brought him home with a tie-breaking run with a double to straightaway center field. Marty, the pitch that Brock hit, boy, that's uh, right in his wheelhouse, and that's the way he hit it. Uh, high fastball right out over the plate. And a whole lot of it. I'm not so sure the ball bounced out of here the way it ricocheted. Yeah. It? yeah. The way it came back into the ballpark. Uh, of course, that backdrop is out of the ballpark. It certainly came back almost strong to hit out. Uh, but we'll take it. Brock could have easily been a third. No question about that, the way he can run. Well, let's hold him right here. Two to one Cardinals. Gary Templeton, who hit the ball hard in the seventh inning, but had his line drive picked off by Geronimo, is 0 for 3. Total of three runs in the game on a collective figure of nine base hits. The Reds have had five, the Cardinals have had four, but they lead two to one. 
Hard throwing Raleigh Eastwick with Brock at second, one out. Templeton lines to center. Geronimo will play that one. Two out. One pitch. Records second out of the inning, and it brings up Tony Scott. He's one for three. Scott swinging around as a left-handed batter for the first time in the game. Sends a high pop. Back of third, Flynn Concepcion to the Cardinal bullpen, and Davey has it. Raleigh Eastwick out of the bullpen and in two pitches, gets outs two and three. But in the eighth for the Cardinals, a go-ahead frame, two runs, two hits with one left. And after seven and one half, it is St. Louis two and Cincinnati one. There's only one original in any business. In aluminum replacement windows, it's New Sash, the one that others are compared to. With this year's record-setting temperatures, thousands of homeowners are proud that they chose New Sash. Women love New Sash for the tilt-in windows that make cleaning faster, safer, and easier. Men like the insulated glass feature because they're usually the ones that put up and take down the storm windows. And with New Sash, storm windows become obsolete. The main reason for buying New Sash replacement windows is that old windows cost you a lot more in fuel costs each year. With New Sash replacement windows, you will save up to 30% in heating and cooling costs. New sash windows are custom made for a tight, perfect fit. Today is a great day to call New Sash, 267-8396. New sash is the only replacement window to carry the good housekeeping seal of approval. For a sound investment for fuel savings, convenience, and comfort, invest in New Sash. BJ Industries is your exclusive New Sash distributor. Call 267-8396. Right now, we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. This is WMNI-FM in Columbus, Ohio, featuring the very best in baseball and the very best in music. Stay tuned immediately following the game and see why more people listen to Quad 100. New pitcher on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals is a rookie. Right-hander John Urea, U-R-R-E-A. He's in for the eighth time this season, all out of the Cardinal bullpen, has a record of a win, no losses, and in 12 and a third innings has given up five hits. Nobody has been able to score on Urea this season. Struck out seven, walked two. He's been impressive. And in a one-run game, he's going to have to face some tough hitters here in the Reds' eighth inning, and Ken Griffey, Joe Morgan, and Danny Treason. We got a run in the fourth. They score two in the eighth and lead by one. Griffey's 0 for 3 has not been able to get the ball out of the infield. Joel Youngblood is in playing right field now as Urea delivers down and in and it skips away from Teddy Simmons. Ball one. Denny going six and two thirds, giving up the run on five hits before being forced to leave with a cramp in his left hamstring muscle. Griffey checks his swing, and it's a call strike. Norman, working seven and one-third innings, allowing two runs, both earned on four hits, with four strikeouts and three walks. Urea, a ball and a strike to Griffey. Here's a pitch. That is strike two call. Three straight left-handed hitters here in the eighth. Here's a bouncing ball hit towards second. Tyson has it. Flip throwing to Hernandez. One out. Joe Morgan. A struck out. Flied out and bounced out. The first double header of the year is coming up Sunday, May 22nd, when the Reds meet the Mets. Game time is 1:15. Purchase your tickets in advance.
Planter inside to Morgan, ball one. Reds, of course, seeing Urea for the first time, and maybe that had a lot to do with Vern Rapp's decision to run the young man out there. Morgan fouls it back. Urea, 6'3", 205 pounds, born in Los Angeles, now lives in Norwalk, California. At Arkansas last year, was 11-8 and eight, and was a starting pitcher, appeared in 24 games, all as a starter, with a 3.75 ERA. 1-1 pitch, high, ball two. Attendance tonight, 31,836. 31-836. And they've seen a good one. Here's a smash to right center field. Morgan has a hit. Tony Scott was playing it that way. Well, there's a man who can make it happen for you. He has gotten on with a one-off single to bring up Danny Dreesen. Dan has struck out, walked, has scored the only Cincinnati run in his line to right field. Simmons has gone to the mound to talk with young Urea. Greeson batting in the cleanup slot for the first time this season. Call the fun now to do a number on the Cardinals with this club a run down. There goes Morgan. Simmons throws to second. He is out. Perfect throw by Seth Simmons to Gary Templeton. Joe did not like the call. He is in great disagreement with Paul Ruggie, but he's out nevertheless. I tell you, Ted Simmons couldn't have taken it down there and handed it to Templeton any better. Fine throw by Teddy, getting rid of the ball in a hurry and putting it right on target. So a big, big out there, and I'm sure everybody in the ballpark knew that Morgan was going to be running sooner or later. High and outside, a wall and one strike to Dreesen. Inside corner, strike two call. Its total seasons paid attendance, standing at 312,079 with the crowd we have here tonight. Two out of the eight. Down a run we are, and the one-two pitch to Dreesen. Checks his swing, and a foul tip. I'll make it a ball, and apparently didn't make any contact except with the catcher Simmons' mitt, and it's two balls and two strikes. Two and two. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Line back to the mound. Urea drops it, picks it up, and throws to first. Side retired. The Reds in the eighth. No runs with a hit. Nobody left on. And we move to the ninth inning with a score. Cardinals two and Reds one. People say money can't buy happiness. That everybody's got to pay his dues. Children have to go to school and everybody's Dozens of brand new items for Reds fans. The beautiful red serving tray will be a big hit at your next baseball party. And the tray features the official 76 team picture in brilliant color. The new official team shirt looks very much like a Reds uniform shirt. It's double knit and has trim at the neck and on the sleeves. 
Time for Reds fans with a big thirst. There's a new glass mug called the Two-Hander, and it holds 32 ounces of your favorite beverage. Stop by soon. The Reds 580 gift shop, 6 and Walnut downtown. Here's a reminder for dad and youngsters, Mother's Day is this coming Sunday, and you'll find lots of great gift items when you're shopping for mom's present. We're in the ninth inning. Raleigh Eastwick will be facing first out of the chute. Right fielder turned third baseman Hector Cruz, who has gone 0 for 3. Eastwick throwing two eighth inning pitches to get Templeton to line out and Scott to pop out. He delivers to Cruz a taken strike. Owen won the count. That one cut on and hit back into left field. Foster going back on the warning track. Two steps off the fence and makes a catch. Now Ted Simmons, who has bounced to short, walked and walked again. He was walked intentionally in the seventh. Cardinals have certainly made the most of four base hits in leading by a run. Simmons looks at a strike. Foster, Bench, and Geronimo, the scheduled ninth inning hitters for our side. That is in for a strike. 0 oh 2. No balls, two strikes. And high with a fastball. Eastwick, one and two on Simmons. Swung on, hit hard to right field. Griffey there, and whoop, he made the catch. That ball must have taken a dive on him in a hurry. He was very confidently ready to make the play, and then all of a sudden had to reach down below the knees to pick it off. Simmons out on a hard line drive to right, and here's Keith Hernandez. He's fly to center, popped to second, bounced to second. Hernandez 0 for 3. Facing the right-hander in Eastwick with two out. Ball to him. Check swing. Two balls, no strikes. There is strike one call. Hernandez taking a pitch away from him, and I don't think he cared for the call. He said something to Lee Wire as he stepped out of the box. Ball three is up. Three and one. Well, the Pirates really doing a number on Atlanta. They're in the ninth inning. Pittsburgh 11, Atlanta one. He jams him, and he pops him up on the 3-1. Dreesen at first calling and makes a catch. Well, Eastwick does his job. He's pitched an inning in two-thirds, a perfect ball, retiring five in a row. And, well, at the least we need one. At the most we need two. After eight and a half, Cardinals two and the Reds one. Bottom of the ninth with the sacks loaded, two strikes on the batter, and the score is two to one. Phillips is back into the batter's box now. Pitcher has the ball. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch. Plan right now. Call Nassash, the window experts, 267 8396. The winter of 77 won't be forgotten easily, and this coming winter is forecasted as truly cold. New sash, the original replacement window, features the tilt-in window for easy cleaning. Your new sash windows will perfectly fit because they're custom-made to stop heat and cold air in its tracks. Thermal pane glass adds double insulation. 
Your monthly fuel bills will be up to 30% lower with new sash windows protecting and beautifying your home. BJ Industries is your new sash distributor. Outside Columbus, call Collect, area 614-267-8396. You're a winner with new sash. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Reds trail the Cardinals 2-1 to one in the first game of this two-game series with a wrap-up coming here on Wednesday night. And the Reds trail the Cardinals 2-1 to one in the first game of this two-game series with a wrap-up coming here on Wednesday night. John Urea, third pitcher that Vern Rapp has run out there in the game. John Denny started and left only because he suffered a severe cramp in his left hamstring muscle in the seventh inning. Al Roboski came in to retire Rose, and then he was pinch hit for in that pivotal Cardinal eight. And with them scoring two runs in that frame, he stands to be the winning pitcher. George Foster will begin the ninth for Cincinnati. A single, a ground out, a walk. As Dale Murray starts to throw in our bullpen, and alongside him loosening up is infielder Ray Knight. Buddy Schultz throwing for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Foster making Urea wait on the mound after he had completed his warm-ups. George is not ready yet, so Lee Wire holds a right hand up. George started in, stepped out. Will he go in now or not? No, he won't. So Urea goes to the rosin bag. Foster in and waiting as Urea checks in with Ted Simmons. Cardinals two, Reds one, ninth inning for Cincinnati. And here comes a pitch. Check swing foul ball. Philadelphia San Diego game should be underway shortly. Nothing yet has been posted on the Mets and the Dodgers by way of probable pitches. Once you see that come across, you know the game is about set to go, but nothing yet. Bench on deck. Foster at the plate. One strike to count. Urea acknowledging the sign from Simmons and delivers. Missing. Ball popping away from Ted. One ball and one strike. The Reds have not fared well in one-run games. They've been involved in six. They have lost five. One and one to count on the Reds' left fielder. Been a while since Foster has played long ball. Of course, he had a couple down in Atlanta. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fouled out of play. The right-hander, Urea, with the advantage, ball and two strikes. Urea requesting and getting a new baseball from Lee Wire. Foster staring out toward the mound as Simmons sets a target. That one looped in the right center. Got a chance, and it's in there. Base hit. And boy, I'll tell you, the most surprised person in the ballpark was Joel Youngblood. He took the ball on the big bounce off the carpet. And there was Foster streaking towards second and in sliding with a big two base hit. There's a tying run. And there's Johnny Bench at the plate. John with a single in the fourth inning to drive in the Cincinnati run. Urea against Bench. High and inside. John quickly backpedaling. The Reds have their seventh hit. And their second off Urea. Morgan single off of him in the eighth. The 1 0 to Bench. Swing and a miss, and I'm going to tell you, the youngster had a lot of smoke on that fastball. Ball 
one, strike one. Foster leading at second with a potential tying run as he has doubled to begin the ninth inning. Cardinals two, the Reds one. Urea backward glance, one one pitch, high pop on the infield. In fact, it'll be played behind the plate by Ted Simmons, who gathers it in for the first out. Johnny Bench couldn't do it. Let's see what Cesar Geronimo can do now with John Urea. Geronimo has bounced out short to first. Got a fly ball to left, and in the seventh inning, grounded out to second baseman Mike Tyson. Right-hander against left-hander. With a left-handed batter on deck, Mike Lum to hit for Doug Flynn. The pitch to Geronimo. Fouled off and out of play to the left. Geronimo batting an even 200. Has homer twice this season, has knocked in eight runs, has had one game-winning RBI. Club leader in that department, Bench, Greeson, and Foster. It is George at second base with one out. Grounder, left side, got a chance. Templeton up. He cannot make a play. A squiggling, broken back ground ball to shortstop. Foster coming headlong into third base. Templeton looked that way, saw he had no play, and thought better of possibly making an off-balance wild throw that would have tied the game up. So very wisely, Gary Templeton holding up on his throw, and now the Reds have him at first and third. As Geronimo gets an infield hit, and Mike Lum will stand in with a tying run at third and a winning run at first. Claude Osteen, the Cardinal pitching coach, Long laying it toward the Riverfront Stadium mound. He's got Buddy Schultz all ready and heated up in the Cardinal bullpen. And let's see if they'll go that way. Urea has been touched for a leadoff double to right center by Foster. And after popping up bench to touch Simmons, Geronimo squiggles one out toward shortstop. And is on with an infield hit. And they're going to leave Urea in to face Love. Mike is batting 182, has had two hits and 11 times up. The infield for the Cardinals, a double play depth for the left-handed native Hawaiian. Here's a pitch to the plate. He swings and he misses as Urea blew the fastball by him. Strike one. So the tension is... So thick you can cut it with a knife here in the ninth as the Reds try to battle back. Geronimo leading at first, Foster at third, and as Urea moves to his set position, Lum steps out of the box. Lum batting for Flynn, Eastwick is on deck, one man out, and runners on the corners. The right-hander pauses, he pitches, Lum takes it on the inside corner, strike two. You give this youngster a lot of credit. Playing before almost 32,000 people. On the road. Game on the line. First and third. His club a run up. And he's out in front quickly on Mike Lum. Two strikes. Left. Gloved hand on left knee. He has Simmons' side. Here's his pitch. Lum a smash. By Clayton. In the right field. Boston scores. Geronimo coming at third. Templeton. Now it gets away from the third baseman, and Geronimo scores, and this one belongs to the Reds. Templeton fake cutting it off, but allowed the throw to get through. It got away from Cruz at third, rolling down toward the bullpen, and Geronimo up and on his feet comes in to score, and the Reds with two of the night defeat the St. Louis Cardinals 3-2. The Reds out of the dugout, the fans on their feet, as Mike Lum hit a bullet by Mike Tyson in the right field. 
Joel Youngblood came up firing toward third. The ball getting away from Hector Cruz. Geronimo got up and came in with a run that gave the Reds the victory. A throwing error. An error has been charged on Hector Cruz at third base for allowing the throw to get away from him. Templeton, doing a good job of trying to decoy the runners, acted like he had cut it off. When in reality, the throw was allowed to go through, Cruz errored the throw. As he caught the ball up, it rolled down toward the Cardinal bullpen. And Geronimo coming in to score the run that gave the Reds a two-run night and a thrilling come-from-behind 3-2 to two victory. We'll be back in just a moment. because here in the ninth inning tonight, they exhibited one of the traits that has been so prevalent in the last two years that have been World Series championship seasons for this ball club, and that is the innate ability to battle back in the late innings to pull victory out of the jaws of defeat. And that's exactly what they did tonight, coming up with three ninth inning hits, scoring two runs, and pull out a 3-2 victory over the St. Louis Cardinals. Three runs, nine hits, no errors, with seven left on for Cincinnati. While the Cardinals had two runs on only four hits, they committed one error and left four men on base. And that one error, of course, was the one that brought them defeat. When Cruz could not handle Youngblood's throw from right field, Geronimo coming in to score the winning run on the play that saw Mike Lum single the right, scoring Foster with a run that tied the game up. The winning pitcher, Raleigh Eastwick, one win and two losses on the year, his record, while the defeat went to right-handed reliever John Urea, and his record is 1-1. One and one. The Reds and the Cardinals will be off tomorrow. They'll close out the two-game series on Wednesday night. And in the 8.05 beginning, it's going to be right-hander Bob Forsh, who has won four of five decisions this season for the Cardinals. And the Reds will be sending to the mound veteran left-hander Woody Fryman, who pitched so super his last time out, and he'll carry to the mound a record of 2-2. Two and two. Plenty of seats and all price ranges are available for Wednesday night's wrap-up to the series in the homestand. And we, of course, will be along with the broadcast, the pregame shows, on most of these same stations beginning at 7.35 Cincinnati time.